Welcome back to Anime on Draft, episode 28. We got a jam-packed uh, schedule for you uh, today, so let's uh, let's jump right into it. Um, I'm joined, as always, uh, by my host, uh, Rolando. Yo. And, uh, as always, Alec. Welcome back, everybody. Cool, cool. Uh, today, um, it was kind of a struggle to actually find this beer for everybody, but uh, we ended up getting the uh, Sam Adams uh, Oktoberfest beer. Well, Rolando and Alec were able to find it. Apparently, in uh, the part of town that I live in, it was like fucking impossible to find. Um, so I'm going with Sam Adams Boston Lager. Um, I guess I'll just talk about it briefly and you guys can talk about the uh, regular beer. Um, but it is a lager. Um, it's 5% alcohol by volume. And if you haven't had it, go drink it because it's it's good. That's <laughs> about what I'll say about that. But in terms of the uh, Oktoberfest, I'll open it up to you guys um, for your first impressions uh, and things of that nature. So go ahead and uh, pour it out. Take your first sip and let's uh, talk about it. All right. Um, mm-hmm. I just want to preface this beer. So this is, um, so these beers are normally drank in the October season around Oktoberfest, and they're called Merzen beer, and it's like German for, like, <coughs> like Merz is March in German, and so like these beers are brewed originally in March, and are kept until around late August, September, early October. And uh, that's when Oktoberfest is in Germany. So that's why uh, these beers are generally drank during Oktoberfest. So just wanted to bring that up. <clears throat> kind of brewed for that season, because if uh, you haven't heard of Oktoberfest, uh, what are you doing, first of all? Uh, <laughs> second of all, you know, a good time with good beer partying um you know kind of in conjunction a little bit with halloween and things like that so good time all around so pump or october fests are the best thing like if you like beer and you like festivities then october fests are just the, the the best thing ever you get you go there and you get the gigantic stein and then you just go to booths all over the place and you're like let me get that beer and then you fill up your giant stein and you just walk around and you get drunk and then you, you take a you taxi eat, home eat delicious food like you take a sauerkraut taxi and home sausage and <laughs> good german food <clears throat> hell, hell yeah for for german schnitzel yep schnitzel yeah, there you go <laughs> There you go. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. This. What do you guys? Uh, what do you guys think of the, about the beer? This beer has a really nice amber color. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes, it does. It, it's a really pretty color. Um, it's pretty like clear for the color too. Um, mm-hmm. It's not like super dark or like a. It's like opaque or. Whatever. Yeah, like it. Like, you can kind of see when the light goes through it. It's pretty vibrant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like a, a sunset, <laughs> like through a window, you know, when it's like mm-hmm. all orangey. It's like that. Yeah. <clears throat> if you're looking through a glass, but uh, the head kind of disappeared for mine pretty quickly. It yeah. kept a small layer on the top, but the actual like foam above it disappeared pretty quick. It's um, very malty. The beer. Mm-hmm. Spicy. The smell is spicy to me. That's what I remember from drinking it in the past is like the good, like malty, a little bit of an aged flavor uh, in there. Um, I'm super bummed out. I couldn't get the beer because I really (laughs) fucking like this beer. It's super good. It's It's, um, it's very caramel. Yeah, I was about to Mm -hmm. say. Yep. (laughs) I think the main flavors are really just like malt, caramel and kind of toast like that's at least what I get. Toasty yeah. malt and caramel. 
it's a it's, it's very similar to the, um like a like an english ale but mm-hmm. i would say it's more toasty um than than like english ales mm-hmm. whereas uh like it, it is pretty malty but uh this one's a bit more like caramely and toasty it's 5.3 percent alcohol by volume so not high at all definitely a and good when, session beer when you kind of think of those like english ales too you, you get like those red like brick oven sort of uh taste there and i i remember from drinking it, it's not really like that at all um definitely like what you guys are saying with the caramel notes and things like that yeah I'm trying to think if there's i mean mm-hmm. it's a pretty simple beer but I th- I think that's good in in this case. It's more about the process, I think, than anything. Yeah. And I think having a really complex beer intended for an Oktoberfest would... You, Oktoberfest, you don't just go drink one beer and leave. You drink a lot of you beer. You drink a lot of beer. <laughs> over a long time. And you don't want to get tired of drinking that beer in a gigantic stein. So, like, if it's... If there's a ton of flavors, you're going to get sick of it or, you know, and it's just going to be too much after a while. Yeah. Like you get for the alcohol content. You get some sort of like uh, palate fatigue if you Mm -hmm. were drinking some sort of very heavy, complex beer for Mm -hmm. a prolonged period of time like that. Like, I don't know about you, but I personally wouldn't want to be drinking something like an IPA or... Um, no, like no, a strong ale, no. like, Mm-mm. uh, for like in a boot. For yeah. That's like <laughs> being like, Hey, let's go put a, a, uh, Russian Imperial, um, stout in a, oh, in a fucking no. gigantic stein. <laughs> it's like four beers deep. You just, let's go drink that. First of all, you die. Cause that's like 10%. You probably something. just throw up immediately. <clears throat> you would just throw up. Cause it's, yeah. you're literally basically drinking a wine bottle alone in like two hours. Um, I mean, it's, but yeah, it's it possible. Would, it is possible, but it's not advisable. It's I not would advisable. Say. It's not it's a good not time. Advisable. It's not a no. good time. <laughs> but um, I the I've had this one before in the past as well, and I think my one of my favorite parts about this beer is the fact that it's very consistent from bottle to bottle and from year to year. It's yeah, all like they do a good job of making it the same, which I like. Some people might be like, oh well, you know, having a different one each year. No, no. I want it to be the same. I like the flavor. Leave it. Don't break or don't fix it. it what is it? What's the phrase? God, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Jesus yeah. Christ. Don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, don't don't fix what's not broken. <laughs> don't, don't fix it. It ain't broke. <laughs> fix it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right. Whatever. But um, I think that's one of my favorite aspects of this beer is it's just from like sip to sip, bottle to bottle, year to year. It's very consistent, which is I like. Yeah. 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 So. Well, I guess uh, I guess then the biggest problem is then finding it. Um, apparently, I had that issue, um, but hopefully, you guys at home can can find it and enjoy it. Um, definitely, Vaughn highly it. recommended. Uh, well, I went to like three Vons and they didn't have it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I that's the biggest deal I guess on my end. But for you guys, um, I'm not gonna you know, stab it in the dark, uh, from drinking it last year. Uh, but what would you guys kind of rate it? We can start uh, with you, Alec. Um, I really like it. Uh, I think the first time I had it actually was, I don't know if it was two years ago or it was, it was not last year. It was two years ago or three years ago. Um, and I've liked it since then. Um, I think it's simple. You could drink it for a long time. I definitely always want to buy it again and then it goes away and it, I'm always sad. (laughs) Um, I think it's a good solid beer that I'm going to give it a 3.75. I think that's a good rating. Nice. Uh, Rolando, what do you, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, just to, I guess, touch upon what Alex said, he kind of covered all the points. It's very consistent year to year i've never really had this beer and been disappointed it's very easy to drink um some people may be like off put by the color 
of the beer and think like, oh, it's it's a, it's a dark looking beer. It's going to be bitter and all that stuff. It's definitely not. It's very malty, mm-hmm. caramely. It's got a very subdued but nice aroma, you could say. It's not floral or anything, but it's definitely kind of sweet and toasty. Yeah. I think uh, I'm going to agree with Alec. 3.75 is uh, pretty much where this beer is at. It's a it's a good beer, consistent year to year, and uh, yeah, like uh, I'm always look I always look forward to the fall season to uh, buy this beer in bulk. Fall season just has good beer. Like, in <clears throat> they general. do. Like it's yeah. just it's a good a good time to huddle up uh, next year, cozy fire. Or if you live in California, the hundred degree weather in late October somehow, um, and just you know drink drink some good beer. So uh, definitely yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, I wish Maybe I could get use another a fireplace because <laughs> I'm almost done with this glass. Bottle number dos. All right, with, uh, with that said and our high praise uh, for this particular beer, let's jump into some of our anime. I know we're going to continue to lead off with uh, this anime, Love is a Cocktail, kind of segueing uh, you know, into an alcoholic beverage before jumping right into our uh, big bulk shows. So uh, this week's was called uh, The Cinderella. We have our main um, heroine. Sprain her ankle at work trying to hang a lemon figure. Winged thing. lemon it man. It, it they called it, it, I believe. It does. It doesn't matter. I think you're right. It, it does doesn't matter. matter. It's a winged lemon man. So her her prince, aka her husband, comes comes into the rescue, sweeps her off her feet, takes her home, and everybody in her office is like, "Oh my god, I wish I had a husband like that." Uh. Except the old guy who said he looks just like him. Yeah, he's like, I, that's how I was when I was younger. He's like trying to get that young lady, uh, trying to get that young lady, young lady attention. That's right. Um, but eventually, you know, he makes her a drink um, and kind of tricks her. Um, the re- the drink this week is as the uh, the title of the show um, or the episode was Cinderella. There's no booze in this. It's just orange juice, pineapple juice, and lemon juice. Very mm-hmm. acidic um, in my mind. <laughs> um, but as always, she she proceeds to get quote drunk um, and then embarrassed when he tells her like, "Bitch, there's no booze in this. Like you're just you you just hungry, girl. <laughs> um, she's thirsty. Thirsty." Thirsty, um, she's thirsty. That that was what I was looking for. Well, maybe she's hungry too. You know? You're breathing heavy, girl. I know you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, you cute, cute is always good. Uh, animation quality. Um, this is a drink that anybody could make, and if you threw some champagne or some vodka in there, you know, you have yourself a nice uh, alcoholic beverage as opposed to a virgin. Uh, a nice drink. beverage. Yeah. If you threw yeah. vodka in there, it'd be uh, yeah. anything you could- low calorie. Low calorie, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's like a that's like an intense screwdriver all those juices in there <laughs> throw some grenadine maybe have like a cinderella sunrise or something i wonder if you if could use white a, rum that, that would probably would be probably good, too. good yeah um, you know hmm. a whole bunch of things tequila you can throw in there you know hmm. a bunch of a uh, bunch of different things so maybe this is one we try who knows um, and then make it our own way <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah. So, uh, with that said, let's uh, jump into our main show that we wanted to talk about this week, uh, which was Food Wars Third Plate. Uh, and not only Ooh. is it the third plate, but it is the third episode. Uh, we kind of have um, the beginning or maybe like middle of uh, the school festival where everyone's trying to make that money with their booths and things like that. And we kind of have the come up of. Uh, Soma, Soma's uh, booth. He's starting to realize what he has to do in order to try to compete um, with the Chinese stall. But uh, Rolando, what did uh, what did you think of this episode? Did it have uh, enough ma and la for you there? Ma and, ma la. and la. Wow. No, it was not spicy <laughs> enough. Meta, um, meta as fuck. Damn. This uh, Damn. this episode, you know, it was interesting, but it kind of felt. I don't know, to me, it kind of felt like stuff just happened, but I didn't really get the same inspiration that I usually get when I watch Shokugeki. And so, Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I get what they're trying to do, but for me, it just seems like 
everything is kind of like a step by step process at this point. So it's like Soma has his idea, and then like it doesn't like it. It's supposed to look like it's starting to fail at first, and then like he starts like recovering by doing something, and like clearly they're hiding whatever the fuck is supposed to be going on. Like I guess it looks like he hired the fucking uh, super secret, super secret in the super dark. Super secret, yeah. fucking. But you can see his huge as fuck hand and know it's the huge dude. Yeah, and, it's the fucking yeah. stalker. <laughs> and so, like, he probably, like, you can clearly see he got sent to, like, his diner, like, to do something. Yeah. So, like, I don't know yeah. what it is, but clearly that's part of the whole crux. Like, this kind of still felt like an intermediate, intermediary episode, like, yeah. the last one. I wanted I'm, to kind of talk about that, too. Um, and we, we, we mentioned this uh, the week prior, but the pacing of the show seems like a 24 or 25 episode show. Um, this episode, much like last episode, nothing really went on, and you kind of described the process for that, Rolando. Um, I don't know if you agree too, Alec, but I think the pacing and how the show's been going is kind of moving more towards uh, that direction. I mean, I definitely think the pacing is a towards a longer show. I still think it's going a little too slow for mm-hmm. my taste, but I actually loved this episode. <laughs> purely because of when uh uh oh crap what's the main char- the main character soma. soma soma yeah met with a girl who makes stinky stuff and then Which that just made the episode for me the crazy girl who was like <laughs> yeah you know the purple hair smelly bitch. smelly food that is like really good yeah was, they met together and he's little she's like peanut butter and octopus and they're like freaking out and then you have megamin or megumi whatever off to the side like i don't think they ever should have met and that made the <laughs> whole episode for me i'm like this right here made the whole episode but <laughs> that's the only reason why i, I love that i thought episode. it was funny that like she like they were like talking like amongst themselves and then like witch girls just in the background like munching on yeah, that uh, <laughs> steam bud just like <laughs> on it with her eyes all <laughs> swirly or whatever and she's yeah, like, yeah. Nom, nom, nom. yeah yeah that, was, what, um, that whole section was good for me what i'm curious to see is uh rindo and kind of her interaction because we see her a couple times this episode the first time she goes to like the chinese stall and she's like this line's too long I'm not standing. And then she sees like Soma's cart and she's like, oh, interesting. Like, this is what's going on. And then she comes back and sees him kind of giving out free samples and stuff like that. And she's like, interesting strategy. And she's just like so coy. She doesn't have a booth to herself, uh, which was kind of mentioned as well uh, when they were talking about like the rankings and things like that. So I'm curious to see where she's going to come into play on this because she she's such a good character. She's like she's like a sneaky character she's kind of involved with the first seat but like i feel like she has her own alternative motives and we talked about you know rolando with her and her voice actress just like top top tier so i i want to know what's going on more with her yeah i mean uh i would say um i like was she eating bugs or something this episode like she yeah, was going yeah. around she, like to different clubs. One of the clubs. stalls she walked out. Yeah. yeah, they were like, "Oh, how does the cricket taste?" Or I don't remember what. But yeah, she was eating bugs. But yeah, like speaking about like voice <laughs> actresses and stuff. Like I thought that in this episode in particular, um, Arena's voice actress, who we all know was Karen from Gamers last season, like Karen. she's mm-hmm. doing a really good job of playing the character. So. Like, I almost yeah. forgot that the voice actress changed. Oh, it I changed? was going to mention. Yeah, I, I was going to mention that, too. So the original voice actress, Alec, in the uh, first season got very ill. And so she mm. was unable to she continue died? for second season. No, she's she's still alive. <laughs> she, she's um, alive. <laughs> she, we, we thought she would, <laughs> we thought we thought that she was actually going to come back and do this season, but it ended up not being not being able to do so. But I, I was going to say the same thing, Rolanda. She's doing an excellent job as Arena. I mean, the Sundere entitled bitch. Um, and just just rocking it, doing a good job for that. And I know, I think going forward in this season, we see a more tender side of uh, Arena. So it'll be interesting to see how she kind of portrays that. Honestly, I would be okay going forward with just her continuing the role. Like, why even bring back the other person? I have at this a question. Point? What if do she's being her. more tender, do you think in a restaurant she's making gourmet tendies? Oh that'd be yeah. Awesome. 
She, she's definitely all about the tendies. She's making the gourmet tendies. T- tendies and sauce for everybody. You know? Oh, man. R- S- reservation subscribe, subscribe, only. <laughs> subscribe to the podcast. Get some arena tendies. We'll send them your way. <laughs> yeah, if your son needs tendies, um, then Aaron has got the tendies for him. Tendies. <laughs> yeah, the, them god, them god chicken thigh tendies. Uh, the the Zetai Roku. Um, anyway, uh, but good episode. Uh, good episode, I think. Um, but yeah, kind of like what we were saying, Rolando. I think they're just gonna stick with her going forward. She's great. Um, hardly any noticeable difference, and just plays the character very well. Mm-hmm. What did you guys think yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the whole <laughs> fucking shit show with the? Uh, Akira and <laughs> Alice and and shit. Oh, <laughs> that, let's make I, I non into a lollipop, right? yeah. like a <laughs> lollipop <making> non. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you she's think so that good. would go with that's curry? That's such a fucking then, like. That's such a. She's so. I'm good. sorry, but that's such an LA like fucking foodie thing. Oh yeah, it, it's just like oh 100 percent. Oh man, let's let's fucking do this, but it's gonna be new age. It's gonna <laughs> have. Non lollipop with curry, curry, sugar, salt, and it's like it's like some fucking like stupid fucking thing. Like I'm sorry, well, it's, and it's, it's, it's going to be chicken ice cream, and it's going to be a dessert, and it's going to be she's, delicious. So like she's what? so fucking, she's so fucking stupid too. Like they're like set up outside. Where's where's the AC outlet? Like where can I get power out here for the centrifuge or like for like a sous vide? And they're the dudes are just like fucking face palming. They're like you're so fucking stupid. I like how there's like thirteen crates of turmeric and he's like why do we have so much turmeric and the other guy's like we only have two tomatoes he's like what the hell is going on (laughs) they're like in the fucking like basically food stall area where everyone's selling shit for really cheap and she's trying to charge two hundred dollars for a fucking oh yeah meat dish. <laughs> it's like to break even we need two thousand twenty thousand yen <laughs> it's like oh my god what was what was what was good though they at the end of the episode they kind of came together and she's like i'm a fucking dumbass like let's collaborate let's kind of like get this going yeah, like we like, all know that they can thing. we all know that they can make good food and kind of arena calls them out on that too they're like you guys were like in the finals of like the fall elections and you're all failing like what the fuck is wrong with you (laughs) like step it up and then they kind of like push all their quirkiness aside and they're like okay let's actually do this now so that was that was yeah i like how the what's his name was like talking shit on her and then her assistant he's like you need to be more positive <laughs> she's just like sorry i rescind my my thing and he and, and they're both just like, like ah. this, this is why we this is why we had this issue because you just enable her and it's like yeah he's like i'm not gonna fight back like she's the whole reason i'm here like she's paying the way bitch i'm not gonna say anything <laughs> but I, I, uh, it had good. some funny moments for sure I think next week we're going to kind of get this conflict resolution and we're going to see how it all comes together. Um, I don't know how he's going to make enough money to compete with the Chinese plays, um, but you never know. It's uh, it's it's school tournament to... anime. It's school tournament satire anime. You know he's gonna somehow come up on this, yeah, or he'll impress have... the person. He'll impress the person enough to say, "You didn't make more than me, but we'll throw down, bitch." Like he's gonna you know. no, he's gonna have Megumi just like half naked, and she's gonna dance in front of the stall, and that's what's no, gonna you can't loot her though. <laughs> oh yeah, don't loot. She's, she's pure. pure. She's from she's the pure. north. She's from like Hokkaido. You he's gonna get her. Um, Nikumi. She's gonna chill out. Okay, there. you can you can loot her or any any of the girls in the Aldini Anyone stall. They're they're all a bunch of hoes. <laughs> <laughs> same same with the customers. After this one, yeah. they're like, oh, sexy sideburns. <laughs> just like no no no. That was uh, that was the Polar Star uh, booth with uh, Kuma Bear, whatever the fuck his oh, name is. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, Aldini's yeah. either the either, way, though, either way. The half Either Italian, the, Itali- the Italian brothers, yeah. the yeah, Italian yeah. bros with all the girls just freaking out over a blonde dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so good. They can't get any work he- done. They're just looking at him. <laughs> that that's one thing you can't knock about this show, though. All the characters are like good and somewhat likable or hateable, depending <clears throat> on how you're looking at it. So just like the character design, they all have like notch, their own per- really. Um, uh, strong personality. What's what's the mm. word? Like it, they're just different from each other. There's, there's yeah. no like really similar characters where you're like, well, they're just basically the same. They're all like very unique. There, that's the word I'm looking for. 
yeah, yeah, unique characters. Definitely. Good show. Definitely. So. Unique New Good York. Good show. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, good show though. Um, looking forward to next week's episode. We'll see kind of some of this resolution. I, uh, I'm guessing, uh, but let's move on uh, to our happy hour segments. Uh, I believe we want to start out with a recovery of an MMO junkie. Um, mm. I, I like the show and I had to burp. So excuse me. Um, but I like the show. Um, it's got, it's got good pacing. Uh, I believe it's only gonna be 10 episodes, which I'm kind of bummed out about, but, um, you know, this episode was good. Um, we're kind of seeing, you know, the two characters coming together, um, and maybe they don't realize it yet that they've met each other in real life and things like that. So hopefully next episode we kind of get that resolution. But, uh, Alec, what did, what did you think about this show in general, this episode? Um, how are you liking it? I like the show. Um, just in general, uh, I think it's fun to watch. Uh, I think this next episode, they were kind of like they're kind of. It seems like they're kind of teasing like she's gonna because they had that dude at the um, convenience store and he seemed like oh she seems happy and he had like you know the blushy face or whatever and then they had like this teaser like somebody asked her out or whatever. I'm like, are they gonna do something where he asks her out and she accepts and then the dude Lily is like oh good for you and then he's like oh somebody asked her out and then they're both just sad and they're like what's going on. Something like that, but I don't know. All in all, I do like the episode. If it really is 10 episodes, that's a little disappointing because, I mean, I would like more to it. Um, I don't, I mean, you could probably tell the whole story in 10 episodes because it doesn't seem very deep. probably tell it in less but, than 10 episodes, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. But I do enjoy watching it. I think they have good, like, you know, they set the dialogue well and the, the comedy is good. Like in this episode where they were becoming partners and the whole guild is just behind the tree and they're all just like peeking their head heads out. I thought that was pretty funny, but that's how that's how it scenes. is, though, when you when you play some of these MMOs and things and you're in a guild like, you know, and I've this is like me in the past. Not that I've been in a relationship in an MMO or things like that, but I've seen like that relationship develop and it's everybody just kind of like on the sidelines, like. When are they going to ask each other out? When are, when are they going to do it? And so I, I totally I totally relate with that because I've seen it happen. So mm-hmm. it, it this is this is kind of a good nostalgic uh, anime for me because uh, like I said I can kind of relate to it not in the fact that like I've ever been in a relationship from someone in an MMO or in your but 30s. Um, just or in my 30s <laughs> and don't have a job and <laughs> and all these things but i i've i've kind of i've kind of seen this happen and this is something that's common um nowadays not mm-hmm. necessarily that the girl is playing a guy character and the guy is playing a girl character and they're like in meshing, the same city and yeah, running like to each other with so an hard yeah. <laughs> um yeah. exactly and like live within close proximity of each other but it's it's like kind of relatable and it's kind of cute yeah. and funny and you kind of root for both the characters you want both of them to kind of you know get together and and see where the romance goes from there and i thought it was cool that the guild even though at first you know the guild leaders like no relationships no relationships but in the end you know they want everybody in the guild to be happy and things like that so they're kind of coming in there and supporting each other so I thought uh, I thought that was kind of cool. But uh, Rolando, do you have anything to to add for the show or anything like that? No, I mean, like like we said earlier, there's not much to the show, but it does like what what it does well. It's it it's got decent like decent to good pacing. The dialogue is good. It's interesting enough to you know keep me interested. But, I mean, 10 episodes, I won't sorely be disappointed if it's only 10 episodes, but I feel like there really isn't much to do, other, like, outside of, um, kind of finish whatever this whole romance is between Mori Mori <laughs> and, uh, I heard fucking Sakura. <laughs> so, like, it, it's just, yeah. like, it it's it's not a very complex story, so... I don't think outside of throwing in some weird convoluted drama that's, you know, forced would like kind of make the story longer, but it's kind of just like a simple romance, I guess you could say, where the gender roles roles are kind of swapped. Yeah. 
I think it kind of depends on how much character development they want to get out of it. Um, I'm good with how they have it now, but if they want to bring more characters into it or like the characters that they have just develop them a little bit more, I think it would be fine. But, you know, I don't want it to end up like gamers where the last episode is them talking about DLC. I think that was kind of like a waste of an episode, but you know, who knows? You hate that episode. Um, she, I didn't you found out I don't Karen hate, is a masochist. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> hate that episode. I just think it was like, I can understand why they did totally, it. Totally. It was like totally in left field. I understand why they did it, but it was like, they couldn't, out of, they couldn't of get nowhere. into the new arc without know. promising a second season for yeah. sure. <laughs> they should have, yeah. they should have, um, or that should have been your favorite episode because Karen was naked talking about being a masochist, dude. Well, I mean, I mean Drew needs her to be a sadist. Like that. <laughs> is the issue. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk about Doki Doki Literature Club in a second. But oh uh, <laughs> going going off of that, uh, a sister is all you need is the next show we're going to talk Seems about. Um, I I I really like this show. Um, but uh, Rolando, what do you think of this episode? Um, it was funny. The there wasn't too much to it. Um, unlike the past two episodes, but I guess that's understandable. Like I, I actually find myself seeing the similarities with it and Arrow manga, and then just going like, "Wow, like I'm enjoying this way more than Arrow manga, just because mm-hmm. it's not trash." Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> well, and the characters are all better. Yeah, the characters <laughs> like, are all better. Characters the story better. is already like more interesting than Arrow manga. It, it's just I don't know. Well, it's just blonde, more entertaining. Blonde girl. What's her name? What? Oh, Elf. Um, Elf, Elf Yamada Sensei. Yamada. She was, yeah, she was the one character. good character in Arrow Manga. But <laughs> let's like, take her out of well, that show when we talk shit about it. <laughs> and, well, and and Nayada, Nayuda, she's a better character than Elf Yamada. She was fucking but, hilarious this episode. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, like, ta- like, she's so like, good. He's like, like trying to feed her an egg and she's like sucking it <laughs> like it's a dick. It's just like, what the fuck <laughs> are you doing? She's like they. She's like, oh, you're just gonna present your balls in my face like that. Yeah, and that's like a. She's so uh, good. It's funny because it's like the actual word that like is a kind of euphemism for like your nuts in Japanese is tamago, which is which means egg. Mm -hmm. So like it's like a literal wordplay joke that translates into English pretty well. (laughs) That was pretty funny. That whole back and forth they had though. When she kept going, is the reason that you don't see me as a partner is because I'm also a child. And he's like, huh? What? And, and he's clearly her. just yeah. pretending just like he hears back everything pun, wrong. The puns. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. The, the music is so great. loud. I can't <laughs> hear you. <laughs> but uh, what was good about this episode, though, it was we also got a little bit of development in t- uh, in terms of their characters, Nayuda and uh, Itsuki, mm-hmm. where uh, Miyako is talking to Itsuki kind of drunk. And she she's like, well, what do you actually think about Nayuta? And he's like, well, it's not like I don't like her, but I had to turn her down in the past. And we're like, well, why did you have to do that? She seems like an awesome girl. So we kind of get a little bit of more development into those two characters. And we know Miyako like likes Itsuki um and he doesn't see it clearly and so we we kind of have like this love triangle kind of forming here um Miyako isn't forward at all though she needs to kind of step up her game a little bit if she wants to get in on this and she's not but uh to. we see that yeah oh 100 not going to but we we can <laughs> see that you know Itsuki is pained in some way by not choosing her and she for some reason went from like this dull um this dull character to kind of like this slut character and we don't kind of know why so it'll be interesting to kind of see how that development went they hinted at it at, in this episode so i thought that was because she got declined nice. She got declined, so she got to be a hoe now. Like, she got to be a hoe. She's, trying she's changing. To she's be changing that her uh, her approach. She's like, well, if yeah. pure, if pure and subdued doesn't work for you, then I'm gonna be a <laughs> slut. Pure, unadulterated Just, straightforwardness. I like when you. He's, date me. <laughs> well, and he's kind of debating, debating like putting her down too, because he even says like, "I have feelings for her," mm-hmm. but it's like at that point, why are you turning it down, dude? It's like in your fucking lap. Like, <laughs> it's because he. Take, it's the same reason he turned down the artist though, because he wants to improve himself. Because she's a better. That's true. Writer. It's also the same so reason like, why Masamune go. turned down uh, Sugiri. Because she's crazy and can't walk downstairs. Yes. <laughs> Oh God! Another one. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, like we've been saying, super good show. Um, the art style is excellent. We we I don't know. We need to really talk about it. But they end up going to like Hokkaido after with like this artist, and they hang out. And oh, whatever. his illustrator, wasn't, yeah, uh, his illustrator, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they get that. And he's just like, I hope bowl of food. I had just eaten when I saw this oh episode. God. I was like, fuck, I'm <laughs> hungry again. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky because I was eating um like ultra super spicy seafood udon soup at the time and i was just like i'm hungry eat this <laughs> just mm-hmm. it, that it was a good time to be eating watching that yeah. show i watched that yeah. show and shoku geki at the same time and it was worth it man they they are drawing food like excellently these days like just you watch those two shows or you watch shows with food and you're just like fuck dude, dude that like, that, that so fucking good. that bowl it was just like hokkaido seafood and it was fucking fresh fish, fresh salmon roe, fresh fucking oh. uni. Like, it was just, oh. like, I looked at that bowl, and I'm just like, you know how much I that bowl would Hokkaido. cost here? Here? Yeah. That would yeah. be like a, like a fucking, pr- like, $80 bowl. And it probably, it was probably, like, $20 there at most. <laughs> like It's just like, oh my gosh, it looks so good. I want to go to Hokkaido. It's tonight, dude. It's tonight, dude. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing to do but in Hokkaido except eat. <laughs> eat. Oh, that's the point. That sounds snowboard. so good, dude. Like snowboard. <laughs> eat and snowboard anyway, and eat again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's move on. Let's uh, talk about uh, King's Game. Um, Rolando, Meh. you said you watched the first episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess you can give your impressions on what you've seen um, in the first episode. <laughs> uh, I he mean, loved it, dude. I don't really get the main character at all. He's just yeah, like he it. No, no, nobody does. It, it doesn't make sense what he's trying to do. He's all like, I can understand that the point is he's conflicted because he participated in the King's game already, but he's so wishy washy and it like everybody else in the class is so like, clearly supposed to be antagonizing him that it's it's just surreal that i just yeah, feel yeah. like there's this huge disconnect where it's like i don't feel sorry for the main character because he's acting like a little shit and then <laughs> yeah the it's, class it's not that is he, not realistic it's not that he's either. wishy-washy yeah it's not that he's wishy-washy he's just a big bitch and like he can't like step up and say guys i've played this fucking game before if we don't do this we're gonna die and that would solve 99 percent of the problems of this show well, just don't be a fucking bitch like he does do that <laughs> and no one fucking believes him because it's like would you believe somebody if like they fucking said that it's like no you wouldn't and then the shit starts happening and then they're like oh well maybe he's right but we're gonna beat the shit out of him anyways because he's annoying little <laughs> yeah. shit it's like well yeah, and then he's like he's like crying. He's like, he won't listen to me. <laughs> it's like he got fucking dude, you're kicked such... in the mouth. He shouldn't have any front teeth. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he has he that's, has super teeth, dude. It's old. He got oh, that's kicked a, in the mouth. That's kind of what I wanted. To, I was going to talk about slipper. that uh, for uh, for this week's episode too, because like they're all in like this rainy park, and he gets like the shit beat out of him, mm-hmm. and like one of the guys from the class that comes was, in and like saves him. And that the, was episode he's, like, two car- when he got beat. Yeah, but like the the th- in this episode, like the the guy walks up and like is starting to like carry him away to like the hospital or whatever, oh, and then yeah. like all of a sudden he's he, like at first he couldn't talk, and then like halfway through the episode he's just like fine, <clears throat> like gets up and starts telling another flashback, which is just like stop with the flashback. That's yeah. the problem with this show. Like That's they keep flashing say. back, and nobody fucking cares about what happened in the past. We know all these people died. I don't care about any of these characters, and it's not helping the development of the main character because he's such a little shit that mm-hmm. nobody cares it's the, like just show us like what's gonna happen with these new people the issue i had with this most recent episode is it feels like they're trying to have two shows in one yeah because they keep yes. going back to last like it would be like hey let's flash back to last season when there was no last season it's like what are you trying to put like a previous season inside of a season for i don't understand like <clears throat> when so they have more character flashbacks. development, they have more character development with the characters of last season than they do of these characters this season. Yeah. And so I'm not <laughs> invested in anybody. All, no. Everyone I know about this season is just a whiny bitch. Everyone mm-hmm. in the show is a whiny bitch. Like, yep. like this yeah. show is so bad 
to me <laughs> that like I kind of feel like it would be interesting to keep watching it and then just fucking rail on it every every episode. I of mean, the podcast. it might be yeah. good to that would actually be kind of fun we because should. it's something I'm gonna, completely I'm gonna, different like, than we normally do. That's true. I mean, I guess we <laughs> like, did I rail know, on Alec, Manga, said, but, like, yeah. <laughs> I know, Alec, you said you were going to stop watching. I'm going to continue watching it just because it's such a fucking shit show. Like, it's so stupid. And, like, you know so what's going to happen. People are going to fucking die. And all the characters are terrible. Like, yeah. It's I mean, I'm a, thinking about so stopping bad. to watch it. But, like, at the same time. Okay, so my favorite part of this episode was when that dude shows up and he's fucking like saving what's his, the main character and then that girl is like another names matter another names matter yeah no and then <laughs> girl who gets naked and is like half naked and he's like put some clothes on she, the crazy one she's like what yeah. are you doing or whatever and he just fucking flips her and like throws her on the <laughs> ground and just is like what's wrong with you and then the main character's over there like eh, 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 and he's like oh Thank shit you. i got to take uh, him to the hospital uh. And then the girl and he's who's fine, to, like five minutes yeah, later. Yeah, five minutes later. And then the the girl though who's supposed to text people dies. Like, hey, can I come with you? And he's like, all right, let's go. And then crazy girl comes, like acting all nice. Hey, can I come with you too? And he just fucking smacks her across Slops the, the face. shit out of her. <laughs> he's just like, what? Bam! He just like he's like, I can't deal with this chick. And he just leaves. <laughs> Dude, that was the it's, fucking best, dude. I was oh, like, this it's chick. this show is so stupid. It's so bad. Like, it's just so bad. I'm like, this girl's acting crazy. This dude slaps the shit out of her. They beat the shit out of the main character for really no reason. Like, now he can talk and walk all of a sudden. Oh, and then here we are back to season one. I don't, I don't understand. His yeah, legs, I mean, and I mean, we, we can. His legs are fine. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. We, I mean, and we can talk about the flashbacks, but they honestly don't matter. Like, no, it's they just don't. stupid, stupid bullshit Batsu game shit where people end up dying. Like, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and it doesn't matter at all. We know all it these doesn't. people die anyway. Like, I am I down to continue watching this why they're for the sheer purpose of trying to rail on it every week shitting on it yeah because yeah. it's so fucking bad <laughs> i'm down for that let's keep it i will watch it every week just to shit on it all right let's see what what stupid <clears throat> shit happens next week let's go week four <laughs> nice so uh, anyway uh, after we shit on that show let's move on to uh maybe a show that you guys actually do like um Let's talk about uh, Ancient Magus's Bride. Um, I'm not watching this one, but I know you guys are. Um, what's going on um, this week? Did you see all three, Rolando? Yes. Okay. Um, what did you think of one and two and three, I guess? Um, it's it's good so far. Like, I already talked about last week how I thought the score was good. And in particular, mm-hmm. episode three had oh, really yeah. had really good score. Mm-hmm. Um I do like the fact so it's like there's the whole scene with the um with the drag the wheel dragon and it's, uh-huh. he's having his final dream and she says like seeing the dream the score there was really good and I like how mm-hmm. they're bringing in elements of so it's like it's not just like typical score but like it fits kind of the the style of the show so it's like it's very like um you would say cinematic. So it's like, there is Mm -hmm. like orchestral like score being done, but they Mm -hmm. also bring in elements of like stuff from like Britain. I kind of got like a, like a Celtic feel from the, the actual song they had in that dream sequence because Mm -hmm. they brought like the, the, the female vocal melody solo with you know um piano accompaniment and like that like for me it just kind of screams the the whole like kind of you know sort of celtic ish kind of deal that you would see in i guess like a i don't know like braveheart or something you know Mm -hmm. it yeah it i for me the the music is really well done also the the animation is really good the mm-hmm. story is told very well and honestly this third episode like i didn't really expect to feel invested in these dragons but mm-hmm. i like after the that dragon that really old dragon turned into a tree i was like mm-hmm this was like really well done to evoke emotion. Cause it's like, I was just mm-hmm. like, 
I feel like a sense of it, like I feel solemn and a sense of quaint sadness for the dragon, mm-hmm. but also kind of a peace because he like he knows that he's going to die and become <clears> part <throat> of the mm-hmm. landscape and he yeah. like has accepted it and it's just like they did a really good job of kind of i guess portraying that and at the same yeah. time contrasting that with she says current struggle with like i guess depression depression <laughs> yeah, yeah is like the best way to say it yeah i i agree i i was while i was watching this episode I was like, the whole episode was really well done. I've read it before, so I was kind of wondering, like, how are they going to portray this, you know, the dragon part that you were talking about and, like, the flight? Because they did a good job in the manga as well, and I was like, how are they going to do it differently? Because they have, obviously, motion to take advantage of. And uh, they did a really good job, and I think the best part of this, like, episode three was the score. The score was amazing for me when first when she's like traveling to the dragon place in the mouth of the dragon Mm -hmm. and the score they have going for that is really cool and like you said they really like grab from a lot of different types of music um or like you know cultures of music and it just really brings it all together the the dragon scene turning into a tree is just like it hits you right in the feels um and they just did a really amazing job all in all i i agree i i totally didn't expect to like you know like where like when you watch like a ghibli or disney film like sometimes Mm -hmm. like a very powerful moment happens and it feels like you just got punched in the gut yeah like i didn't expect to get like a slight feeling of that when like after um the dragon had uh you know like essentially laid to rest i was just Mm -hmm. like this is like I just get a lot of like the the Disney and Ghibli vibe from it. It's very mm-hmm. well done. Yeah. Production IG and Wit Studio, like we already know that they they've put out a lot of God Studios. Um very <coughs> good shows already and they're doing a very good job with this. Um like I haven't read the manga or anything, but the I feel just as an anime only watcher like it's been really good so far. As both the um, there are slight differences between like <clears throat> some of the subbing, I guess, and what is written in the manga. Um, it, it kind of it's kind of different, but it doesn't change like what you get out of it. So, you know, when the dragon was um, turning into a tree or whatever mm-hmm. and they were like in the flight, um, the dragon is telling her, I use some of your power in the manga, he's saying, I use some of your power to make the dream more vivid or whatever. In the anime, the um, mage caretaker guy said it. Oh, when yeah. He was like, caretaker. he's going to be helpful to her. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other one was when he reads her thoughts, he says that was a disrespectful thing to do to humans. You get a little more description in the manga. He's kind of saying he would he told her, like, as dragons, we share everything with each other. We're just like always knowing each other's thoughts and shit. So I just kind of looked at it. I should have been more, you know, like careful or whatever is what he says to her. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what he says to her in the manga in this. He says that was a disrespectful thing to do with a human. I'm sorry. Similar vibe, but like a little less like description. So it's like, it's different, but it, for me, I was like, Oh, that's different, but it doesn't, I'm not like, "Hmm, I don't like that. You know what I mean? You know, just like how they, yeah, It, 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 I'm sure it's different than we were talking about with, um, uh, classroom of the elite where they completely change characters roles. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> in this they're not completely changed it's literally like one line shifted from this person to this person and and i'm sure it's just for visual effect yeah. and that's all but all in all the animation is really consistent and they switch between those two styles where it's like the normal style and then where she gets flipped into the water in episode three and it's like that really cartoonish poorly drawn style and everyone's like, huh? and it's like kind of funny looking. Um, oh, yeah. I think they flip between it at good times and it, it really fits in. But I, 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 I yeah. do have to say that they do a really good job also. Like this is another thing that's like very Disney, but they do a very good job of making the non-human mm-hmm. things very like likable and adorable. So it's like the dragon's 
um the like the little dragon hatchlings are like very cute and then the salamander that's at angelica's shop in episode two and then like i guess it's like following chisei around like that thing was like basically a cat but it's like a little salamander it's like Mm -hmm. like these like things that she can see but not necessarily like all humans can see um like they tend to like flock towards her and like they they like her so it's like it's Mm -hmm. kind of like they kind of portray them in an endearing light that like (coughs) makes you go like oh like they're not necessarily bad creatures they just you know are drawn to her Mm -hmm. and i think they that mixed with the darker aspect of the show provide a really good balance because there's obviously this really dark She's like almost jumping off a building yeah. and the dragon mentions that and her mom killed herself. And it's just like, there's this really dark undertone to the show with these really like light and comical things on top of it that create this really nice, like balanced package. And I think that also is kind of like a real Disney studio Ghibli kind of vibe as well. They just do a good job of balancing. She's for sure struggling from like depression and Mm -hmm. all of that. It's, it's, it's an interesting like show for sure like that there's not a lot of shows that are willing to like address this kind of thing because it's hard to pull off well Mm -hmm. i would say without people being like i don't want to watch this i i don't want to feel depressed after watching a show like yeah so but they did they're doing it they're pulling it off so far so i'm excited for the next episodes i i really liked all the manga up to um up to volume seven volume eight comes out in uh, february of next year and so i already pre-ordered that but <laughs> oh nice um so it should be you know it, it should be cool i think the whole season should be cool and i hope if they do because it's seven volumes long and this was we haven't even finished volume one this was halfway through volume one so i don't know how long they plan to take the show but or if it's just going to be like interest for the rest of the volumes or what but um i'm looking forward to the rest of it so Mm -hmm. yeah 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 cool sounds like a good show um Mm -hmm. definitely interesting um we've got a little bit of time left Uh, rolando do you want to talk about uh, a couple of shows that you're watching Uh, i'm interested to hear about love live just because i like love lives but fuck (laughs) a cores and then uh as well as uh, just because i know you're watching both of those so if you want to talk about those uh briefly yeah um love live uh as expected they added more random drama that got resolved in the episode so it starts with the phone call mari gets at the end of the last episode and her father tells her that the open house for the school got pushed a week and as soon as i heard that i'm like oh like clearly this conflict is going to be the open house is going to be the same day as love live qualifiers and that's exactly what happened and so (laughs) they're like trying to figure out like oh we need to do both like we like but oh it's far away uh and um chica has the brilliant of idea idea of going like well mari you your family owns a helicopter couldn't we just like take the helicopter back to the school (laughs) and like perform at the open house and then she's like no we can't and then like starts like spouting random english words and saying like i promised dad that we would do this on our own we can't use our helicopter and then i'm just like but She can't even fucking speak Japanese. (laughs) That doesn't make any sense because it's like, I know like if I were to tell my child, like, oh yeah, if you want to accomplish this, you have to do it on your own. That like, she can't fucking drive. She can't fucking (laughs) fly a helicopter. (laughs) Like I, I will, I, I will, if my daughter like, and I owned a helicopter and she just needed to like go for like bring her and her troop from one fucking place to the next in half an hour then i would be like yeah that's fine like i'm not really make like helping you do your thing i'm just transporting you i'm you know doing what a normal parent would do but she's like no you can't get any help from dad it's just like we are have you to pay like for a helicopter? fucking stupid <laughs> like that's not even I like hate, i hate mari it's just like i hate mari dumb. so much she's <laughs> she's such a fucking dumb bitch <laughs> But like, oh my god! They did like the similar thing where to like Muse, where they played their first single, 
um, at the open house. So like, it's like, oh yeah, we're similarities to Muse, but it was a funny episode. Like I feel this season is really being carried by Rico because like she, for some reason, like she's had so much like, um, screen time in like just these first few episodes. And she's kind of been like the, I guess, rock in the group where like she is just there and like is very um motivated <clears throat> and isn't like the character that's like giving up and all of that and it's just kind of interesting compared to how she was last season and yeah um that's that uh it's still the same Mimi show it is uh just because is turning interesting because we get Cut, more formally introduced to the head of the photography club. Well, I guess she's not the head because um, Natsume is technically the president. Oh, no, no, never mind. She's not the president. She was the, sco- she was the student council president, but the head of the photography club um, now has like this um, infatuation with Eita because he's like the mysterious transfer student and she wants to use his picture in this photography competition so she can save the photography club but he doesn't want to because he thinks it's embarrassing and then I kind of feel like she's going to be thrown into this like love polygon where like there's probably going to be some sort of weird chemistry between her and Ata because she keeps like she won't leave him alone and that kind of thing and then like I'm starting to be confused with Natsume because like She's like sitting there waiting for A to respond to her line um, text like fucking like days after she like sent him one. And she's but she still seems like she's hung up on her unrequited love, love for for Haruto. So it's I don't get where she where she's at, but I feel like this story is moving at a pretty good pace. Um, I'm. I've been interested in what's going to happen and like it's what it does what a lot of good romance dramas do, which is pull you along, but it, it doesn't resolve everything right away because then you, you're left with like a kind of temporary satisfaction and gratification, but you're unsatisfied. Whereas this is like continually like pulling you along getting you interested in the characters and all that. So it's been a pretty good show. I don't know if Alec, you started watching it or not, but just because yeah, no, um, I was going to watch it and then I was eating and I didn't get to catch up on it yet. And then I was eating. Yeah, so I was eating. What happened was my food got here late and then I was like, okay, I'm going to watch it. And then I was like, Oh, let me try on my sweater that got here. And I, I spent time shrinking it. And then I was trying that on. And then the food place actually sent me double my order for one of the items. And I was like, well, okay, cool. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and that's what happened. And then I was going to watch yeah. it after, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. I still recommend watching it. Yeah, I'm going to watch it after we record. You um, recommend tonight. watching it just because? Just because. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Just because I have to say, like it is, it is being penned by the author of Soccer So, and so like it's got the similar vibe. It's it's good. Well, we'll we'll see how King's Game goes. Like for me, the next few weeks, like I'm gonna love shitting on it, but at the end of the day, it's like I'm not gonna waste my time watching it if it just continues to be awful. So maybe that's one of it's the ones that, uh, that I pick up. Didn't you watch the whole? We'll see. Didn't you watch all of Glass Slip? Yeah. You have no excuse. This can't to, be worse than that. You had like it's the King's Game. Yeah, Glasslip was good. King oh Glasslip was good. King's Game is like at the same level there were of chickens. Glasslip. And if you finished Glasslip, then <laughs> you can probably finish King's Game. There, yeah, but there were chickens in uh, Glasslip. I don't know if uh, King's Game is gonna gonna beat that. Man, PA works. Godlike. <laughs> God. <laughs> Let's uh, let's move on. We got a couple of uh, news things to talk about. Um, no, I know I brought news. up the uh, League of Legends and ALCS <laughs> versus the Overwatch League uh, drama. Um, 
I guess we don't know like a hundred percent in terms of what actually happened, but uh, a kind of overview is Immortals was dropped from uh, NALCS, which is the North American uh, League champion. What what is it? North American League League of uh, Legends Championship Series. Yeah, uh, basically the the North American um, where all the NA teams play every year in a league, and then they go off to Worlds or whatever. Um, but basically, uh, league dropped a team, Immortals, who they weren't good, but they also weren't like the worst team. Well, they were second place. But uh, the speculation, yeah. Um, so the speculation was that they dropped this team because they signed a contract with Blizzard to join or to create a team for their Overwatch League. Um, I know Rolando, you were talking about maybe it had to do with like a money thing. It cost two million or sorry, twenty million dollars to join the Overwatch League. Um, yeah, yes, Blizzard and it's, and, and, it's and participate expensive. in that. So whereas like NLCS Blizzard, is what like ten million. million or something. Yeah, so the franchising mm-hmm. fee for Overwatch League is twenty million, and for NALCS franchising, it's ten million. And so I can see how Riot may look at that and be like, "We don't think you have enough backing to finance both thirty an million Overwatch dollars. League franchising spot and to pay for the ten million franchising fee for NALCS," which is it's kind of disappointing. But at the same time, like I can see if they've got a bunch, they've essentially got a bunch of NBA franchises that are trying to buy into League of Legends. And there's so much more money Mm -hmm. to be had there than there is to be had in Immortals, I guess you could say. But they did kick out Mm -hmm. Envious, who is backed by... um, Whatchamacallit, like they just got like a $35 million investment. And they kick them out. Yeah. And it's like $35 million Why? investment. And they're going to be moving closer to the LA studios. But they're going to be in Texas. And then they do already have a, a very um, popular and well-performing <clears throat> Overwatch team that is joining the Overwatch League. So I can start to see Riot's motives here where it seems like they don't want to have any conflict of interest be like between the organizations supporting both overwatch league and lcs so it's kind of a well, scumbag move it, but i i agree with that and like immortals too they have a very successful um southeast asian dota team um not not like the best team but they're they're like if they're not tier one they're like just below tier one uh performing well there and i think um I might be talking on my ass, but I know Robert Kraft, the owner of the uh, Patriots, is actually interested in a share of Immortals or some other team um, within the e uh, the esports scene. So it's it's not like they're not going to have enough money, regardless. Uh, Immortals is sponsoring multiple teams across multiple esports. Um, it just seems to me that Riot is kind of taking the stance of, well, you joined another league, like fuck you, like you're not going to be able to compete in our league, things like that. Especially if like what you're saying is true, um, and Immortals like was actually competitive within NALCS. I don't follow a uh, league as much as I do Dota and some of the other things. But if they're like competitive and you're kicking them out and you're leaving Echo Fox, who are fucking terrible, well, um, in just about every esports thing that they do. It's it's kind of scream scumbaggery, um, in my scum opinion. Immortals Baggery. was the second seed out of NA and <clears throat> went to Worlds. Yeah, and yeah. they've consistently and out, like, they've consistently been in playoffs since they've joined the LCS. So there's that. I mean, yeah. like Dignitas, who has been in the esports scene forever, and League of Legends in particular, mm-hmm. got kicked out of NALCS. Phoenix One got kicked out even though they're technically backed by um they're backed by like s- no no where are they the ones backed by the 76ers or is that envious but like i think that's envious isn't it like there I think there so. is like actual money behind some of these teams and so right i right. i don't clearly understand it it's like yeah like echo fox is under rick fox but then we've got other teams like I know the Golden State Warriors bought a spot into the NALCS so 
they're clearly probably going to pick up if they were smart they would pick up people from the immortals roster and probably from envious um Mm -hmm. there's also the fact that these teams need to have 10 man rosters so they need to have a starting roster in NALCS and start and like a five man roster for the challenger series which is supposed to be like talent Mm -hmm. producing so we'll see how all of this turns out like we do know that TSM, CLG, Cloud9, and Team Liquid um, are in NALCS. And then we've got you the Golden State Warriors TSM. team. We've got Echo Fox. And then uh, well, another team. That's that's the thing, Alec. You can kick out TSM you if know, people would they stop don't watching. get backing. Well, I, I, I don't disagree with you, but at the end of the day, it's about making money. And if a team is backed by a professional, like the NFL teams are owners are starting to get into this, too. They see money. They see profit. So when you start getting these sort of teams in here and they don't have sponsorship or backing from some of these like NFL owners, NBA owners and things like that, kiss your ass goodbye. Because Riot is they proving make money. here with some of these moves that it's 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 more about money than it is about producing talent, producing good quality games. So if TSM or Cloud9 can't produce some of these sponsorships and things like that i could totally see them getting kicked out and again it's not about fan driven it's about making money and at the end of the day these teams are paying 10 million dollars to get into there and even if you can produce it and even if you're getting all the sponsorship money and things like that they're going to see moving more towards the future because they're seeing that blizzard can charge 20 million dollars and people are like okay you know i'll do it you know these owners and things like that like that's a good investment for them and as they're seeing that they're going to start increasing the money and riot at the end of the day is going to follow the money it's been a joke for years but in terms of microtransactions in terms of you know their sponsorships and things like that they're following the money 100 percent. They, they could give a shit about the player base and the fans well that's the whole like i that's the, another reason why a lot of people are mad at riot because they're bringing nalcs back to best of ones um in in the next Ugh. in the next season so the main reason is because they want, they don't want everyone to be watching Cloud9, CLG, TSM um, on one stream, whereas the other stream that has like the other teams doesn't get any viewers. So they're like, well, if every team only plays one game every day, then it's like, all right, well, yeah, TSM had their game um, now, but now you get to watch these two teams that doesn't really have a big fan base and maybe they'll get fans. So it's like people are going to fucking turn it off as soon as their favorite team is done. Like it's not going to change anything. What you're actually doing is lowering the competitiveness of your region, which NA is already still a joke internationally. (laughs) Like, yes, you're just making it worse for, for NA. Like, yeah, to yep. do well at an international event. So like, whatever, like they're chasing the money, rides doing whatever they want. Like, I don't, they're, I don't I mean, necessarily be fall that for it, move. but it's smart. Like they're doing smart shit. Like I don't blame them at all. Yeah. But as a fan of the NA region, I feel like it sucks. it's yep. kind but of kicking screwing out teams, teams with a big fan base is a bad money move. If they were to kick out C9 and TSM just because they couldn't bring up the same kind of investment that others could, that's a bad, they're going to lose more people than they want to in my opinion we'll see uh we'll see because I, i'm like i'm not right. gonna watch it i watch for c9 and tsm i don't and i barely watch as it is so <clears throat> i i so kind of getting off a little bit i hate valve for their kind of standoffishness and hands off with a lot of their esports uh in terms of CS:GO and um dota but you see regions flourish because of this, because of the standoffish nature. They'll they'll release something like maybe once, twice, three times at the max a year, uh, in terms of promotion and things like that. And then they step back and they say, "All right, we've we've created this league for you guys. Go." And so more teams have, you know, the ability to come up, you know, and create names for themselves and things like that. It's more for creating your brand than it is about sponsorships and things like that. And what's crazy about that, too, is, you know, Valve has this uh, undying, like, love of their fans and things like that. And they can create things like the International that has, you know, a $28 million prize pool generated almost completely from the fans and a third of the ticket that they're charging to 
watch this and things like that. Just imagine the money that Valve is making off of that. So there are ways to make money in esports kind of being this standoffish, but Blizzard and Riot are looking at it like I get all this guaranteed money. We have, you know, six to eight teams in a region all charging, you know, $10 million or $20 million to get in on this and playing for three months at a time and then charging, you know, another $20 million or $10 million, whatever it happens to be. And they're just raking in the money. It, it doesn't matter um, about creating a brand and things like that. So I applaud Valve uh, for that kind of standoffishness. I, I think they can be more vocal in some of the things that they do because it does create a lot of controversy. We've been in the same patch for Dota for almost eight months um, with almost no like response from Valve and things like that. So there are things that they can do better. But in terms of generating new esports teams and generating the hype that is driven completely from fans, Valve does a much better job than both Blizzard. I, I don't even think of I'm, Blizzard as like an esports um like that's that's company, the main. but Riot in, in general. I, I'm I'm a bit worried about Overwatch League in just the, the sense that Overwatch in in general is a hard esport to watch as a spectator. Makes it's like dizzy. very different mm-hmm. than playing Overwatch. Mm-hmm. So I I'm a little Definitely. worried for Overwatch League and how that's going to turn out. Also, um, Blizzard has StarCraft, but they haven't mm-hmm. done they too well with with Hots or anything. Like, nope. I I'm I'm I am skeptical, but I'm hopeful for Blizzard here. And then with Riot, like I, I, I don't have any doubts that the NALCS franchising is going to be successful. It's going to be good for the teams because yep. they get revenue sharing and they have security. But um, also for the fact that I feel like it's going to, if anything, mess up the EU LCS um, in general, just because a lot of the players are going to start leaving. Like they've already been leaving EU, but... A lot of them are going to start coming mm-hmm. to the NA teams. Like the EU talent is just going to start Definitely. being drawn out. Definitely, because the when you you see some of these owners, you know the Robert Crafts, you know the 76ers, the Golden State Warriors, things like that. They want to generate what they have with basketball, what they have with football. They want this American centric sort of, you know, ideal that America is the best and things like that. Now, it will create a lot of buzz in Europe, but, you know, if if it does if it's not successful and we can't still beat Korea, um, I think a lot of these owners are maybe back off and right might be in a kind of a jam. Um, so we'll kind of see with that, but I think we've kind of talked about this enough. Um, let's kind of move on, uh, with a couple of things here. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, this game that is free to play, um, is called Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, I ended up, um, you know, talking about that, uh, or playing that this weekend, um, I know Rolando disagrees with this, but I think this is like the game of the year no. uh, for me personally. 2017 is such um, a good year for video <laughs> games, and you think this is the game of the year? <laughs> I honestly do because of the experience that you get from it. And without spoiling, you know, everything here, because it is a game that you need to experience and you can play it within, you know, two and a half to four hours, depending on how fast you read and things like that. But this game is a fucking experience. It is an emotional roller coaster. And the way that it is presented um, and what you have to go through with this game, it is like emotionally draining and touching. Um, I would definitely, definitely recommend playing this because it's free. Um, you can get it on Steam. You can get it online. Uh, shout outs to uh, Dan Salvato and his team. He actually is uh, one of the original creators of Franker Phase Z, if you guys didn't know that. Um, a Twitch extension that allows you to add emoticons to your channel. Um, big shout outs to him and his team. Um, this game is kind of revolutionary to me it it changes the way you kind of think about games and you think about uh, visual novels uh, because it is set in the visual novel setting but it branches out and creates this whole new atmosphere of something more um and things like that so without spoiling it uh get that game it's free spend the four hours it takes to beat it it is uh fantastic so 
Um, I highly recommend it. Um, the last thing I wanted to uh, shout out before we kind of ended here, and I wanted to kind of gauge your guys' interest and stuff like that, um, is like cooking streams or like just seeing, you know, on the blog pictures of things that like we make when we eat. Um, I've been cooking a lot more recently and I have like a ton of pictures of uh, my food and what I've made in the past like month and things like that. So if you guys are interested in that, I could post that to our WordPress um I don't know Just what you guys think to the Instagram. I know, or the ins. I don't. Yeah, we'll uh, we can, can figure that what's out. In it things like in that. In the comment, and if you guys are interested in making that, so that's something to look out for in the future. Uh, but with that said, um, I think we've talked a lot um, about a few things um, this show. Please uh, check out the Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Um, if you can't find it, I recommend the Boston Lager. It is also delicious. Um, so check out both of those uh, from Sam Adams. Um, our WordPress is uh, animeondraft.wordpress.com. Twitter, Facebook, etc. are uh, Anime on Draft. So look us up through there. And then check out the SoundCloud, iTunes, and all that, as well as YouTube uh, for the podcast. Again, yeah. search Anime on Draft. YouTube is uh, anything uh, later you guys want to SoundCloud. Sorry, it's just work. Yeah, yeah definitely. If if yeah. if you're if you're waiting for the YouTube and things like that, just note it's going to be a little bit later. But if you want to hear the raw from us, uh, go ahead check out iTunes and SoundCloud. Um, but with that <clears> said, be up guys, almost anything, anything you, you want to add? Yeah. No. Anything you guys want to add? No. I think that's it for me. I think that's it. Yeah. Go get this beer well, and enjoy. <laughs> If you if you can find it, because apparently I can't find it anywhere. Just believe. Um, <laughs> just have to believe hard enough, believe. and it'll show up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so with that said, uh, guys, uh, that's uh, that's us for episode twenty-eight. We will see you later. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs>